September 18, 2022. A powerful earthquake that strikes southeast Taiwan causes bridges and buildings to fall or sustain significant damage. The earthquake that occurred on Sunday was recorded by the USGS as having a magnitude of 7.2 and a depth of 10 kilometers, 6 miles. The epicenter of the quake was 85 kilometers, 53 miles east of Yujing District in Taiwan. We know this will take trillions, not billions of dollars. We also know that countries, many of whom are burdened by growing levels of debt, simply cannot afford to go green. Here we need a vast military-style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector. We need a vast military-style campaign to marshal... Wait, uh, uh, let, let me replay it so that you know I'm not making this up, okay? Let me just replay it. Listen to the last part of this. Here we need a vast military-style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector with trillions at its disposal. Who's his? Far beyond global GDP and with the greatest respect beyond even the governments of the world's leaders. It offers the only real prospect of achieving fundamental economic transition. Beyond what? Look what he says. Beyond even the governments of the world's leaders. It offers the only real... Beyond the governments of the world's leaders. Yeah, so his, his, his disposal, so he said this on purpose. He's reading his notes. Who do you think told him to say this? This was not a fluke. And by the way, they've been erasing this off the internet. We talk about from Daniel, from Book of Revelation, from various passages, there's going to be a global system. It will rise out of Europe and they will crown their leader and it will be a he. It won't be a she, it'll be a he. And the Book of Revelation calls him Antichrist or Beast. He's going to be the most powerful leader the world has ever known. The Book of Revelation tells us, Revelation chapter 13, that nobody can make war with him. Who can stop him? Absolutely nobody. He obviously is talking about someone. He's talking about someone that's a man. He's talking about someone that nobody knows who he is yet. He's the most powerful man in the world. More powerful is he than all of the global leaders combined. Revelation 17, the 10 kings give their power and authority to the beast that people can't see it now james you have to be in denial in seconds moms and dads you know that feeling your child gets lost in a store maybe just wanders off for a second or two your heart stops though panic sets in and you think the worst it's happened to most of us but what if you had a secret weapon an extra layer of safety so to speak how far would you go to keep your children secure would you be willing to microchip them expert tell us the technology already exists Hey guys, good evening to you both. You know, chances are if you have a four-legged family member at home, it's already microchipped. And if the technology exists to save Fido in an emergency, what about microchipping your child? What about microchipping your child? Before you say, no way, I would never do that, hear one mom's story. It's the longest two seconds of your life, and it's absolute panic. I want my son back. 
We've seen it in movies. This is my daughter! Over and over again, children gone missing. It's terrifying. For Stephanie Rodriguez Neely, life is busier than ever with four children, including a newborn. She knows scary situations can happen in an instant. And for her, it has. If it'll save my kid, there's, there's no step that's too extreme. Stephanie's teenage daughter is a special needs child prone to wander off and trust strangers. For that very reason, Stephanie wholeheartedly welcomes microchipping a child. If a small chip the size of a grain of rice could have prevented a tragedy, I think most parents, you know, hindsight would have said, I wish I would have done it. But Stephanie is in the minority in her Tampa Bay mom's group, where other mothers call this too sci-fi and invasive. You're putting a battery in your kid, you're putting a chip in your kid, and where does it stop? Turns out the technology to microchip your kids has existed since the early 90s, but hasn't really caught on. Is it a little too science fiction for you? Very much so. A well-known technology expert out of Boston tells us microchipping poses little to no health risks and would act as a barcode of sorts. Without question, it could save a life, uh, reunite a family, uh, find a missing Alzheimer's patient. I always tell people, as long as you're doing what you feel is best for your child. You're not really wrong. And guys, this is what we're talking about, the microchip. I don't know if you can see it in my hand. It's the size of a grain of rice, very, very small. And the expert that we spoke with actually tells us that barcodes were introduced in the late 1960s. And back then, people thought, uh, this is way too invasive and too weird. And now barcodes are so commonplace that we don't even think about them anymore. The expert tells us this will happen sooner rather than later. Well, and Mel, you said that the technology's been around since the 90s or whatever, but, I mean, have companies actually tried this? That's a different scenario. Two of them. Two of them, as a matter of fact. Both of those companies ended up uh, going defunct. They tried initial public offerings. It did not go through. But you can bet somewhere, someday, someone is going to pull this off, and we could see those microchips. In everyone. In the book of Revelation in the Bible, it talks about the great Euphrates River in the Middle East. It says that in the last days before God destroys the earth, that this great river will actually dry up. Well, this is the current state of that river. It's drying up. But that's not all. The Bible says that God chained up four fallen angels and actually imprisoned them underneath that river. And according to the Bible timeline, when the river dries up, they will be released from under the river to slaughter one-third of mankind. And the river is almost dried up. So it's only a matter of time before those angels are back on the earth. Brothers and sisters, God bless each and every one of you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Jesus is coming, and Jesus is coming one day, very, very, very soon. I mean, just today we had a, there was a 7.6 magnitude earthquake that rocked central Mexico with uh, possible tsunami warnings alerted. A 6.9 earthquake in Taiwan just yesterday, uh, and then going down from there, 6.5 Taiwan, 7.0. Vanuatu, 7.6 Papua New Guinea, 6.0 Indonesia, 6.2 Indonesia, 6.2 Indonesia, 6.6 China, 6.2 Southern East Pacific Ride, 6.9 Central Mid-Atlantic Ridge, 6.1 Papua New Guinea. This is Dapu 7, an earthquake update. You can see here that we have had a pretty significant earthquake striking in Mexico, right here on the border area. 
This is the same area that I warned about. We saw a little bit of odd swarming building up in this region, and this is what we were kind of anticipating happening. Decent quake, as you can see here, 7.5 to 7.6 hitting in this area. Tsunami warning was issued. There are reports of some buildings that have crumbled and went down and people being rescued. Furthermore, since the Almighty has created all people equal, regardless of their religious, ethnic or social origin, we are agreed that mutual respect and understanding should be considered essential and indispensable in religious teaching. We defend everyone's right to religion, to hope, to beauty, to heaven. Kazakhstan is, in the words of its national anthem, a sky of golden sun and the same is true of each human being. In their absolute uniqueness, if they are in contact with the divine, every man and woman can radiate a special light in our world. For this reason, the Catholic Church, which tirelessly proclaims the inviolable dignity of each person created in the image of God, also believes in the unity of the human family. The Church believes that all humanity forms but one community, this is so because all stem from the one stock that God created to people the entire earth and because all share a common destiny, namely God. And because all share a common destiny, namely God. His providence, evident goodness and saving designs extend to all mankind. Interreligious dialogue is no longer merely something expedient. It is an urgent, needed and incomparable service to humanity, to the praise and glory of the Creator of all. I ask myself, what is our point of convergence? For the Church, all ways lead to man, and that man is the way for the Church. For the Church, all ways lead to man, and that man is the way for the Church. It is impressive that each day millions and millions of men and women of different ages, cultures and social conditions join together in prayer in countless places of worship. This is the hidden force that makes our world move forward. This is the spirit that pervades the declaration of our Congress. This is the spirit that pervades the declaration of our Congress. In concluding, I would like to emphasize three words that it contains. Peace. Peace is urgently needed because in our day every military conflict or hotspot of tension and confrontation will necessarily have a baneful domino effect and seriously compromise the system of international relations. Peace is born of fraternity. It grows through the struggle against injustice and inequality. We who believe in the creator of all must be on the front lines in promoting the growth of peaceful coexistence. We must bear witness to peace, preach peace, implore peace. We plead with you, in the name of God and for the good of humanity, work for peace. Only by serving the cause of peace will you make a name for yourselves in the annals of history. So yeah, the International Day of Peace is coming up in just two days. Can you believe that? And as we know, peace, peace. When there is no peace, 
when they're saying peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. And here we are having an international day of peace in the middle of this. They are currently meeting as we speak. They started meeting on the 13th of September. And uh, this could be where the great Antichrist covenant is signed uh, as they strive to bring in the new world government right before the, sh the new Shemitah cycle begins. And here we are. We've got this international day of peace of all things. Uh, and we know what the Bible says about that. Beware when they're saying peace. This is a long established universal website that serves all involved in Peace Day beginning annually with the 100 day countdown. I thought that was kind of curious. 100 day countdown. Let's see, October, November. Oh, somewhere around December where they want to take all the cash away. It kind of lines up almost perfectly 100 days from that. That's interesting. The closer we get to the rapture, things are like picking up a warp speed. I was thinking the red heifers have officially been deemed without blemish. That happened about the same period of time that China apparently has gone into help Russia. And now officially, Islam is the one world religion. All of this happened around the same time period. The rapture is gonna happen at any second. If you still have one foot in the world, one foot in heaven, you can't do that. What I mean by that is, is if like fornication, drugs, getting drunk, um, things like that, you know, things the Bible says not to do. We live for Christ. These world leaders, and if you're in this country, that includes Republican and Democrat alike. This is all satanic. This is about control and greed. Don't follow people like that. They're going to try to scare you into following them. Follow Jesus Christ, the one who is the only way to God the Father, the true Messiah. He loves you so much. He went through an excruciating death on the cross. On the third day, he rose again. He's alive. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And you know why his name was the only one left out at this Chrislam forum thing that they started? Because Satan knows he's the only way to salvation. Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. The rapture is going to happen any time now. We're just waiting to hear the trumpet. If you're left behind, you're going to have to endure seven years of hell. Don't be left behind. Uh, do I believe the rapture is going to take place? I believe with all that I've studied that this cannot go another year. With everything we're seeing, I mean, there's 2,550 days to account for from uh, Feast of Trumpets for a seven-year period up to Feast of Atonement. And from this year, uh, it lines up perfectly for 2029. If you move that up to 2023, it's way off. Do I believe this can go another year? Uh, I don't know how it can with everything we're seeing. The government now being run by the beast system. Them. The changing of the guard, changing of the guard. The Lord spoke into my spirit yesterday. There's a changing of the guard happening with the queen passing away and a new king. I believe the ten nations are going to be set up. Seven and ten, the beast system is already running things. This is what we're seeing in Matthew chapter 24, verse 7. Shall not, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences. You know, earthquakes, that's the seven O's that are now happening in a diversity of places. The big the big 7.5 uh, or 6 that hit down in Mexico was huge. It's very possible that this could actually move up the coast and California get the big one even this week. Yellowstone crying out to go. I, I'm not 100% sure that we need World War III because of the things that are happening earthquake-wise. America could be destroyed by Yellowstone. Uh, California could slip off into the ocean. I'm just telling you now the birth pains are increasing. That violence is out of control. You can't open up anything that you don't see somebody being shot or murdered and things going on. This is Dabu 7, a heads up for what looks to be a big event coming around the corner. We've got some of the biggest CEOs of the biggest companies out there slashing all their inventory ahead of the busiest time of the year. This has people that watch charts scratching their head and saying, hold on a second, something's about to happen. We've talked about the recession, inflation, but we had one CEO, the one of FedEx, actually come out and say that he believes this is where it's all going, downhill into a major recession. Maybe these others are just just not willing to admit it, but their actions are speaking louder than words. Walmart, Target, and other retailers canceling billions of dollars. It just doesn't make any sense. The holiday season is typically the busiest time of the year. At this time in 2021, there was actually a great deal of concern that there wouldn't be enough inventory to go around due to the global supply chain problems. Everything's changed. Now, all of a sudden, 
the retailers are feverishly canceling order, trying to make it match the environment from a year ago. Something huge is going on here. When you have this many companies making these moves, Walmart is admitting that it just canceled billions of dollars in orders. The next one, Target, has canceled more than 1.5 billion in orders. It just continues to stack up, and it seems kind of obvious to me that all of these CEOs are walking out of a meeting because they're part of a big club that you're not a part of, and they're told what's coming, and to prepare, and to do things accordingly, and it looks like they're doing that. So, call it the writing on the wall, or just paying attention attention to what's going on around you, these types of actions only mean one thing. There's going to be a whole lot less of goods in this country in the coming months ahead. That's for sure. The global government here is steering everybody into a trap. Major warning. Very personally concerned. We are on the precipice of complete disaster in Europe. Keep your eyes on Europe. Putin was set to give a very prolific presidential address and speech, but it suddenly was delayed. But what was expected was extremely dire. And the warning is Putin is potentially about to mobilize some 2 million plus troops into Ukraine and declare a full military war conflict in Ukraine itself. It appears that Putin may in fact exercise drastic measures in the days ahead. So there are multiple, I believe up to three new referendums that are about to be put to a vote in the coming days here in September. Remember I said September is going to be a hot month. It is going to be, in my view, an explosive month. But I reported, of course, on the Pope and October 1st and how we see the moving assets, billions of dollars into the Vatican, centralizing their wealth before what I can only guess is some kind of major economic financial meltdown. So here's what's happening. We are, in my opinion, about to enter a global conflict of epic proportions. So we are already at war. And keep in mind, Biden, as he went on camera on 60 Minutes just a few days ago, said that he would arm Taiwan with American troops, meaning men and women, U.S. troops in Taiwan, to defend it from an aggressor, China, in the imminent eventuality, I believe, of an invasion, which I think is going to happen happen very, very soon, because it's important to understand that this is not just a war with Ukraine, in Ukraine and Russia. This is very much a hot war with China. Eric Schmidt said this just a couple months ago. He says, we're basically losing the AI artificial intelligence war to China, which is how World War III, these are my words, is currently being fought. If and when, and I think it's a matter of time, Vladimir Putin is able to successfully pull off this annexation in various areas of Ukraine. Those areas and geo geographical territories will become part of Mother Russia itself. That will mean that any attack on that soil will be considered an attack on Russia. It is clearly stated as a matter of fact and in international law that Vladimir Putin and potentially his allies like China could use the full force of defense that includes nuclear and potentially hypersonic nuclear tipped weapons in the area. There is a new anti-rapture movement taking place in mainstream Christianity. Very recently, a new movement has begun where mainstream Christians are being taught to shun belief in a soon rapture. Now, we need to understand what is called controlled opposition. Vladimir Lenin said, the best way to control the opposition is to lead it ourselves. And that is exactly what has been happening for many years, okay? A lot of people think that this guy is a hero. Think again. He's controlled opposition. Okay, some people even think this actor is one of the good guys. Controlled opposition. In 1 Corinthians 12, we learn about the gifts of the Spirit. Now, some of you have the gift of discernment of spirits. If you have that gift, then this will be very obvious to you. The whole book of Ruth is a foreshadow, a type of the Gentile bride marrying the Jewish kinsman redeemer. It's all about the bride of Christ and Jesus who will redeem the earth. And the book of Ruth is all about the barley harvest. Okay, when she's at Boaz's feet, it's the barley harvest. Now there's three harvests. You have barley, then wheat, and then grape. Okay, when barley is harvested, it is thrown into the air, into the wind, very, very gently 
Okay, so that's that's the first one. Then the wheat harvest is different. When the wheat is harvested, it is ground under a board that's called a tribulum. Okay, so it's not handled gently. It's handled very roughly under the tribulum. Okay, so you see the difference between the barley goes first, it's more gentle, then it gets rougher with the wheat, and then the grapes are the worst. They get smashed. That's bad. Ruth 3.8. Now it happened at midnight that the man was startled and turned himself, and there a woman was lying at his feet. It's unusual to see at midnight, exactly at midnight, in either the Old or New Testament, because they didn't really have means to keep accurate time, especially at night. It was more typical to refer to the different times of night based on the f watches. The first watch, second watch, third watch, fourth watch. So for this to be at midnight, exactly at midnight, there's probably a reason for that. There's probably a sign here of something significant. At midnight. Why is it exactly at midnight? The parable of the ten virgins. Matthew 25. We'll start in verse 6. And at midnight, there it is again, the mysterious at at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there not be enough for us and you, but rather go to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But but he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Luke 21, 36. Jesus said that we pray always, and watch, and pray that we are counted or accounted worthy to escape all these things. There is a separation that's happening. Okay, Getting saved, getting your fire insurance is one thing, but being on fire fire for the rapture for God to come and take his bride away is something else. Now you know within you it's it's night and day. This is either you're either on fire for this or you're not. He's in the separation. This 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 is being magnified. You can feel it. We can feel it. It's happening right now. It is happening. So pray Jesus. Thank you God that you account me worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass so that I can stand before the Son of Man. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. <laughs>